If you're new to real estate investing, you need to learn how to wholesale. It's a great way to make a lot of money on the side, whether real estate investing is your full-time gig or your part-time gig, you can make a lot of money wholesaling real estate. And the best part is you don't need any of your own money to do it and you never have to close on one property. In this video, I'm gonna explain what wholesaling is and I'm gonna give you three free lead sources to go out and get deals. And I'm even gonna give you three very inexpensive lead sources so you can go out and get good deals. After this video, you're going to have six great ways to go out and make some money wholesaling real estate. Before I get into those lead sources, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. I feel like I'm bringing a ton of value in this video. So hit that like button. So what is wholesaling? Wholesaling is literally selling paper. Paper business. Yeah, paper business. You're not really selling real estate or you don't have to sell real estate because you don't have to close. You get a property under contract to purchase with a closing date in the future. And before that closing date, you get people in that property, other investors in that property with money, if you don't have money, and then you sell them that property before closing. So when that property closes, you just get paid a fee for doing that. A lot of times it's an assignment fee. Sometimes it's a wholesale fee, but you can make a lot of money. I know people that make 10, 20, 30, 40, even $50,000 on wholesales on properties they don't even close on. So let's break that down a little bit and then we're gonna get into the lead sources. One thing I do wanna point out is wholesaling real estate is mainly for investment properties and distressed properties. You know, fixer uppers as is type properties. You're not gonna wholesale rent ready or retail ready houses that are in great condition because they're gonna simply sell on the market through a real estate agent or even for sale by owner at market price. When you're wholesaling real estate, you need to get properties under contract to purchase at deep discounts off of market price. And the way you do that is find distressed properties. What you do is you get that property under contract to purchase with a closing date, one maybe two months out. And at the beginning of that contract, you put a two week contingency period where you're allowed to shop that property or bring in a partner or bring in whoever to see if you can sell that property. What you're gonna do is you're going to price that property at enough of a discount to where someone can buy it from you, fix it up and sell it and still make profit. So if you're able to buy it deep enough, you can make a lot of money and still sell to an end investor who's going to turn around and make money on it after they fix it up. I kind of look at wholesalers as real estate agents for investors. You're basically just connecting a buyer and a seller and getting paid a fee to do so. The great news is you're selling it to somebody who's going to turn around, make it a really nice house and get a good family in there to rent it or sell it to an awesome family to live in. And the person that you're buying the house from or getting the house under contract from is going to be super excited to get out of the situation they're in. Unfortunately, the reason they have to wholesale it most likely is there's something going on with them or something going on with the house that they have to sell quickly and add a discount. Everybody wins and you get paid for doing it. It's a great way to keep the real estate market moving forward and a great way to make bad houses and neighborhoods nice houses again. All right, let's get into the three free lead sources. Number one is wholesalers. We're probably going to buy 50 to 60 houses this year from other wholesalers and almost every single one of them we get under contract from a wholesaler and then we go and wholesale it again because we're able to get it cheap enough and we have a really, really good buyers list of investors that pay good money for properties that they can still buy at discounts. So what you want to do is network with other wholesalers. There's a ton of different ways to meet wholesalers. I'm going to go over a few now. The first way is all the bandit signs you see on the side of the road, you know, those we buy houses signs, every single one of those is wholesalers or other wholesalers. Most of them don't actually buy the property. They're just wholesalers that get the property under contract and then sell it to somebody else like you're looking to do. So every single sign you see on the side of the road, assuming you're stopped at a light, just take a picture of that and contact that person, call them or text them and ask to get put on your buyers list and just start to build a relationship with them. Another great way is to go to your local real estate investing meetup groups. At our meetup group, there's usually 150 to 200 people, and I would say there's at least 50 to 60 wholesalers at every single meetup. So go to meetup.com and join your local real estate investing meetup groups. I say it a lot, but it's so important. I'm going to continue to say it over and over and over, obviously, because there's always new people watching videos, and it's the most important thing you can do. Meet wholesalers there. And finally... Simply, you can just Google real estate investing companies in your area. You can look up We Buy Houses, any of those type of things you Google. There's going to be probably four or five different pages of other wholesalers and other investors. Just start to call those people. If you Google 
sell my house fast St. Louis, faster house, our house flipping company will show up. We have people do it all the time. They call our office and say, Hey, I'd like to talk to your dispositions agent, or I'd like to talk to one of your buyers. You're just getting connected with active people in the market because you want to get in front of active wholesalers so you can help them out and get deals from them or sell them deals. So if they're putting signs on the side of the roads, if they're going to meetups and if they have websites and are answering the phone, they're active. So get to know them. Number two is real estate agents. Now, a majority of the houses that real estate agents sell are houses that are in great condition that you want nothing to do with. You're only going to wholesale houses that need work. Most houses that real estate agents come across are retail ready. They just need a little bit of lipstick on them and then they sell them. And you don't want anything to do with those. You want those hard deals that the real estate agents come across. If an agent sells 20 houses a year, maybe one of them is a fixer upper as is order house, whatever you want to call it, a distressed property. And those properties are actually hard for agents to sell. I know the market's hot right now. It's not always going to be that way. But even in this hot market, we're probably going to buy 30 to 40 houses from real estate agents this year. Houses that are just hard for them to sell. They're not going to pass inspection. A traditional seller is not going to be able to have the money to fix it up. These houses need 20, 30, 40, maybe $100,000 worth of work. And most buyers don't have that cash, don't have the ability to do it, or don't have the connections to do that and fix it up and make it livable. So those houses are really hard for agents to sell. So if you can start to get to know agents, and have them bring you those select properties that come across a year, you can get a continual lead source of really, really good deals with not much competition. You meet these agents similar to where you meet wholesalers at local real estate investing groups. You can look up the billboard. You can just Google, you know, local real estate agents and just call those offices and ask if they know any investor friendly real estate agents. Shoot, you can look at houses for sale on Zillow and look who the agent is for those houses and call that agent. There's no really excuse. Most of your towns have probably 10 to 20,000 real estate agents in them, if not more. So just get to know agents through those sources we just talked about. Lastly, Facebook groups. Now these are getting less and less valuable by the day, but they are still valuable. Join your local real estate investing Facebook groups. There's a ton of people in them and a lot of them are not super active, but there are good investors in those groups. Our team is in all of our local groups. I know a lot of really, really good investors that are involved in those groups. So just get involved in those groups. People buy and sell houses every single day in those groups. I know people in our office that buy three or four houses a year from those Facebook groups. So you're going to have to sift through a lot of junk, but there are good deals in there and that help get your name out to other wholesalers and other real estate agents. If you're posting in those groups, you may buy houses, but you'll also be seen by other wholesalers and real estate agents. So they'll see that you're active and they may just go ahead and message you or contact you. All right, now that we talked about some free ways to get deals, let's talk about some pretty inexpensive ways that you can spend a little bit of money every month, get leads coming in, and then obviously make that money back plus a lot because you'd be getting deals and making profit. And you can put even more of that into marketing and start to build your own machine so you can have leads coming in constantly every single month from your free sources and your paid sources. The first one is driving for dollars. Driving for dollars is driving around looking for distressed properties. If you're going to drive in a decent neighborhood that you want to buy in, there's probably not that many distressed properties. There's 100 homes in the neighborhood, maybe one, maybe two are distressed and likely to sell at a discount. That house, it looks perfect from the outside that may or may not sell at the discount. You don't know what the inside looks like. The odds of that selling to a real estate investor are very, very low. However, if you're driving by a house, the grass is three feet tall, or there's windows are boarded up, or there's a, a you know condemned sign on the front door, or mail is spilling out of the mailbox, meaning that it's vacant and not well taken care of, that house is going to sell most likely to an investor. It might be next week, it might be in six months, but those type of houses are the houses that are great, great leads because A, you're driving in that area, you have your eyes on it, so you know you want to buy it. And two, it's just a house that is going to need to go on the market to an investor eventually because the city's going to take it over or something's going to happen to where they don't want this eyesore in the neighborhood. So it's likely to sell at a discount. So that's a great way to take control of your lead sources, whether you go out and drive three or four hours a week separately, or just on your way to a friend's house or your way to or from work, you just take a detour each, every single day, five, 10 minutes each way, and you can start to build a really good list. A lot of people will just write down the number and go online and try to find the homeowner or send them a letter. 
the best and most efficient way to do it is use the Deal Machine app. It's an app that tracks everything for you. I'm not going to go into the details on it. It just does everything for you. It tracks you. You can find homeowner information. You can text homeowners from it. You can send mail from it. It gives you all the information you need, all the public legal data right there in front of you. We even have a free code. Use the code Faster Freedom. You get a free seven-day trial and free deal credits. I don't get paid anything on the free trial. So check it out. Set your phone for seven days from now and cancel if you don't like it, but might as well try it and get all the free training that goes along with it. The second way I kind of mentioned earlier, but it's a great way is bandit signs. Those little two feet by three feet signs that you see on the side of the road. There's a couple of different options. Most people will just buy them. You can buy them in bulk online for a buck a sign, if not cheaper, and get a Sharpie marker and write whatever you want on it. Write something fun, write something creative, like I'll buy your mom's house or, you know, we buy houses, whatever, whatever you want to put on there is fine. I would suggest using a Google number, however, some number that's not your own cell phone number, because some people might not like that you're putting a sign out there. There are legalities to where you can and can't put signs. Not going to get into all that. A lot of places you can put signs on Friday at five and you got to pick them up, you know, Sunday evening or Lots of people just put them out there and then, you know, people that mow the sides of roads or do whatever will take them and pitch them or do whatever, lay them down their side. Usually not that big of a deal. You can also go online and order them, you know, printed out really nice. And that's usually a couple bucks a sign. So I would think for maybe three, four hundred dollars, you can get a lot of signs and you can get them put out and you will get leads from those signs and you will get other real estate investors calling you. So it's a great way to get your name out and it's a great way to kind of start the wheels turning for not that much money. You'll figure out where to put them out and when to put them out and all that kind of stuff. But putting them out, having a Google number that's maybe not your cell phone number for them to call or text is a great way to just kind of start the leads coming in. The third way is a little bit more expensive, but it's an extremely effective way to get deals. And that is to stack list, niche lists, whatever you want to call it. You are accessing data that tells you that a homeowner is more likely to sell, especially at a discount because of things that are happening. There's literally over two or three dozen types of different ways you can stack lists. Let's go over a couple of examples. One would be a house that has a utility lien on it that is vacant, that is going to foreclosure. Like a house that has all three of those things happening is very, very likely to sell, not guaranteed, but likely to sell soon and at a discount. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I suggest going to batch leads. Again, I have a discount code for that, the code Faster Freedom, same thing, get you a free trial, get you some free credits, but you can go and find out any data on pretty much any house in the country. They spent millions and millions of dollars buying all legal public data from all across the country in every different city. And you can stack for a, a ton of different things. You know, like I said, foreclosure, pre foreclosure, tax liens, utility liens, divorce, bankruptcy, high equity. There, there's a ton of different ways you can stack. Now, when I say stack, I mean, a house has every single one of those checked off. Not very many houses have that many. When you have two or three different things going on with the house or with the person, those houses are more likely to sell to an investor at a discount. And you're going to be helping those people out of those situations. You can't force someone to sell you their house. You treat them with respect. You get them a fair offer. If they want it and take it, they will take it and you can move on and make some money on it. If they don't want it, they'll tell you to buzz off and go try to sell it a different way, but you're at least offering them an option. After you stack those lists and get those homeowners information, again, Batch Leads has a lot of training, so check out their training. They'll go into a lot more eloquent detail than I am. You have options. You can call them, you can text them, you can email them, you can send a mail. So you have a ton of different ways to contact them, but the best way is to start out in an area you want to be, stack the list, get some houses that you know potentially are going to sell soon because they have issues, and figure out the best way to contact the owner, the best way that you're most comfortable with. If you like content like this that gives you actionable things to go out and get deals, make sure to hit that like button like I mentioned earlier and subscribe to this channel. We put out three videos a week, hit that notification bell so you get notified when I go live because I really, really like to answer questions during lives. And I also like to stay very, very active in the comment section below and help provide more detail before and after the videos. See you on the next one.